At 38 years old, I gave myself 18 months to learn how to ride motocross and to get into the best shape in my life in order to compete in the World Bad Championships. From the motocross mecca that is Southern California, I'm a year and a half into that journey as I begin my racing career as a 40 plus beginner. I'm talking back of the pack buckwheater. I couldn't tell you anything about motocross except that there's nothing worse than stalling in the gates. It's a motocross guide for dummies. It's the rookie meets rad, but it's about motocross and not BMX. And it's nothing like Nitro Circus because I barely have an idea what the hell I'm doing. This is simply about what it takes for one man having a midlife crisis to prepare for competitive racing. So the question is, will this jackass make the gate at Hangtown? Or will I end up in a body cast? This is MX Yoga. Before we jump this gate, it needs to be acknowledged that motocross is an inherently dangerous sport that sometimes comes with permanent consequences. This is the journey of a beginner, so mistakes are made, especially in this episode. If you experience a fall like the one you're about to see, don't write it off to cowboying up. Seek medical attention. You may not be as lucky as I was. Yeah, I'm stoked. I got to spend my 40th winning my first 40 novice race out of the Triple Crown Series round one at Milestone. And then I defended the homeland out at Glen Helen, winning the Rim Series overall, capping a five in a row win streak. Six, if you count the face off between Reiki, Lil, Terra, and myself. Right? You would count that, right? I mean, I wouldn't, but you can. Well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. But in all seriousness, this is Fed Beginner, so it's very important that you remember that no one gives a crap. Which sets up perfectly this next race, which is the final round of the Yamaha Dealer Series at Glen Helen. Now round one was also at Glen Helen, and that's where I had the smackdown laid down on me, finishing last in class, and was one of the sketchiest experiences of racing to date. And that was as a beginner. Now with the World Vet just a couple weeks away, I've got to spend as much time as possible in the novice class, which means I need to learn to like eating roost while I push forward. And just hope to survive it so I can gain the experience on the track as well as on the bike. That's the fastest way I know to get faster. I thought I had pushed myself pretty hard in practice, but there were still a few sections in the track I had yet to dial. So going into the second lap, running in second place, I found myself not being able to send it over a small double, and I gave a position to 112, who cased the crap out of the landing, which is exactly what I didn't want to do. But he mans it up and makes the landing and takes over position. So if he wants it that bad, he can go ahead and have it. I'm gonna spend the next three laps and really do what I can to dial the track. There's no sense in me killing myself in this stress test. The whole point of this was to learn what I can while I'm out here and move forward. got about the same start in Moto2 and going up the hill in second place I made the mistake of giving up the inside and 112 was right there to take full advantage and it's right about here I realize I'm about to watch someone die and so I dial it back a little bit and try and prepare for whatever carnage is going to lay before me and then miraculously he pulls it out dude has no idea how close he came to dying. So for his safety and mine, mainly mine, 
I'm gonna give him some space. As they say around the track, I gotta work tomorrow. There it is. I don't even know what happened, but it doesn't even really matter anymore. With number four DNF biting it at the bottom of the first hill, and now number two going down hard, this moto doesn't even matter anymore. So I'm just gonna lock in, have some fun, and see how far I can push myself. Now I have cased the tunnel jump out of Glen Helen at least a hundred times. So with only a couple laps left on the day, I decide I gotta do this. So as I come back around, I give it a little bit more throttle. That was intense. And being that I survived it, I only got one lap left, I'm bound and determined. I'm gonna nail this jump. As I come around for the final time, I give it just a little bit more throttle. That is so much fun when you finally get it right. Man, are you alright? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see you go down, I just saw you not get up. Yeah, I wasn't sure where I was for a minute. It walked me hard. Oh, man. That damn ground's hard right there, dude. Oh, yeah. I about died right there right now. I went six o'clock on the landing, loaded out, but dude, my heart. Da, 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 da. Hey, you're looking good out there, man. Well, I'm gonna try and hit this a couple more times. I'm gonna do a couple more laps. Practice out at Glen Helen for the world bet, and Ricky Rayleigh is out with me. And the focus of the day is simply to dial the jumps learn how to power through the ruts, and figure out the flow of the track with a hundred other riders on course. Then I got too comfortable. Right about here is when I realized my line is wrong. With Yamaha Hill, you need to be on the outside line, carving in, leaning off to the right side of the bike. And here I am, stuck in the inside line with my body position upright and just flat out wrong. This is gonna hurt. I got up relatively quick, but what scared me initially was that I really couldn't feel anything. It went from hurting like a ton of bricks straight to a shocking tingling sensation. I knew the next 10 minutes were going to be critical in assessing whether or not a trip to the ER was going to be necessary. He said he loves you though, wife, and he loves you. Yeah. Telling your wife you love her. I should have just ditched it. OTB, but I tried to ride it out and, and ended up going down pretty, pretty damn hard. I'm gonna get myself psyched up to get back out there and get the blood moving. So uh, I'll be back out there in about five minutes. I'm just gonna try and do some light stretching. I dodged a bullet. 
and by no means was my methodology in assessing my injury correct. But there's no reason in having a guardian angel if you aren't going to make it work to save your butt. Now it's time to focus on healing up and getting ready for the World Vet Championships. Still a little bit sore, but I've had about eight days off the bike while I was away with work, but I'm ready to do this. Ricky Sequist is in town to play race tech and coach, and I'm excited to get his feedback because he hasn't seen me ride in quite a while. I've heard all the hype, and it's kept me in extreme anticipation, but it's finally here. The smell of racing fuel and coffee in the air is simply intoxicating, and it's a rush just lining up for practice. awesome just to be in this environment with racers from all over the world. It's like the Olympics for old guys and dirt bikes. Honestly, if I finish top 20, I'll be pretty stoked on that because I've been a novice for like two minutes and I'm getting ready to race in the second largest sandbagging convention this side of the Mississippi. So let's be realistic. My only expectation is that I'm going to go home today at the end of it under my own power. And all that build up and then just nothing. If you've ever shown up to work and realized you weren't wearing any pants, well, stalling in the gates is the motocross equivalence to that. It sucks. It only took me about a lap to catch the back of the pack but at that point I had no chance to contend with the guys up front. The only thing I could do to salvage the moto was to try and pass as many as I can and make up as much ground as possible. And so I'm on my way, I'm climbing the hill and out from nowhere I get taken out. I honestly had no idea what even happened until I found this guy's YouTube video to get the whole story. I had enough time to roll off the track just as the next set of riders started coming up over the hill and then bam, down goes a rider, another rider, another rider. And my bike is at the bottom of this heap just getting pummeled by everybody that comes over. And after about a minute of sheer chaos, the safety crew got to the site and I was able to get to my bike and I just rolled off. That moto was a total loss, except for crossing off another huge, big first from my motocross experiences. That was radical. And I'm very lucky that there's even going to be a second moto. You're scared, right? Maybe. The way this works is, you do the thing you're scared shitless of, and you get the courage after you do it, not before you do it. That's a dumbass way to work. Should be the other way around. I know. I got out of the gates in Moto 2, but it wasn't the greatest of starts. So as I start up the hill near the back of the pack, the sun is just dead in my sight. I can't see a thing. And then from out of nowhere, this dude is just spread out before me. And I remember right before hitting him thinking no front brake because it would have just ripped him up. So I'm laying into the rear brake, splitting him down the middle, and I essentially case his face. I pull the bike off of him. I feel horrible, but there was really no way to avoid it. That was terrible, man. It was like, man. 
So by the time I get back to it, I'm 45 seconds behind the pack and I just need to finish. He's got forget about it, move on. To top it off, going into the third lap, I started having clutch issues going up the hill. Uh, it was slipping and I was losing power. So with uh, DNF and Moto One, the focus on just finishing became the only thing I could really see. And I couldn't really get on the bike and I didn't have time to stop and communicate with Dave who was clearly frustrated with my lack of prep. He wasn't like riding like this in practice. He's riding like a grandma. <laughs> He's shaking his head. The World Vet is definitely living up to the hype, and I feel like I'm getting the full experience. Now I have to commit to day two, and I'm already battle worn and tired. But it's not the destination, it's the journey. Oh, no. oh, terrible. Oh, he ran right up him, dude. <laughs> yeah, all those balls are good, man. The light is swerving him up. <laughs> Day two of the World Vet Championships. Uh, I've already started the day. Um, finished the first moto, 13th out of 23. Um, didn't get out of the gates good, I stalled, but made up ground and uh, feel pretty good. I feel a lot better than I did yesterday. <laughs> I don't see the other guys stalling out there. <laughs> Only you. I got the yips. Thanks to Dave being there, we're managing to have a good time and staying loose. And no stalling this no time. No stalling, no crashing or running people over. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going on. And maybe I'm just a little bit more affected than I thought from day one, and mentally I'm just gummed up. in the gates again. Really? Yeah. yeah. I sat there for a minute. Maybe more. I caught the field. I didn't finish last. But I want to punch something. It is what it is. At the end of the day, I survived two gnarly days of racing and gained a weekend of stories that will last a lifetime. Great people, great race. Not the greatest outcomes, but I lived to race another day, tempered by a solid hour of intense seat time that I'm thankful I survived. When we come back, we'll be wrapping up the Trans World Series and I'll be hanging out with the SoCal Old Timers. Don't forget to go to YouTube to subscribe, share, and like. And just a couple weeks, the MX Yoga website will be up and running. So until the next one, scrub safely and brat bigly.